So Easton Stick is selected by the San Diego Chargers here in round five. I believe that he is going into an ideal situation to learn under Philip Rivers um, and and to be in a in a place where he's able to grow and develop. Um, so Easton Stick selected by the Chargers. He was my quarterback, you know, five or six. Easton Stick. Easton Stick selected by the Chargers here in round five. He was my quarterback five or six on the board. Um, had Stick ranked above Jarrett Stidham um, and above, eh, right around the you know fourth round range. So Stick ends up going in round five. One pick later, Clayton Thorson in Northwestern gets selected by the Philadelphia Eagles. So he's going to go in there to hopefully be a developmental prospect for the Eagles. Now, not necessarily high on Thorson's ceiling in terms of his physical skill set, but he is somewhat of a refined thrower of the football, throws with some good pace, fairly um, accurate at times, anticipation. So Thorson's an okay guy. He'll probably stick in the league for probably three to five years in a reserve role. So other than that, Will Greer gets selected by the Panthers round three. He may play in 2019 with Cam Newton out. Will Greer instantly becomes the second best quarterback on that roster. He's better than Taylor Heineke. He's better than whoever they have behind Heineke, which I'm not even sure who it is. But Will Greer goes into a pretty good spot. Tyree Jackson hasn't been selected at this point, and we're almost in into round six. Um, so that was a little bit uh, something that I didn't necessarily see coming. Um the Cincinnati Bengals, Zach Taylor, new head coach, they get their poor man's version of Jared Goff in Ryan Finley from North Carolina State. They select Finley in round four. So Finley goes to the Queen City in a reserve role behind Dalton. Um, I don't think he threatens Dalton right away in terms of taking over the starting quarterback job for the Bengals. But... So, yeah, so there's been multiple guys selected, teams that have had really good drafts. The uh, Washington Redskins continue to revamp their offensive line. Last year, the Redskins were sitting at 6-3 and three at a point probably in early November. They're 6-3. and three. Looks like they're going to win the AFC East. And then their offensive line gets decimated with multiple injuries happening. So uh, the Redskins have revamped their offensive line. They, they took... A guy out of Indiana University, big, uh, big offensive lineman out of Indiana University. Uh, let me find the name here. And then they took another offensive lineman as well. Um, and then they recently just took Cole Holcomb, linebacker, North Carolina. Uh, yeah, so they took a guard out of Alabama. So the third or fourth Alabama lineman being selected, that's Ross Pershenbacher. So the Redskins having a very good draft thus far. The New York Jets continue to stock up defensively to try to make a push to overtake the New England Patriots. So with Greg Williams' defense, obviously they have Quinn and Williams at three, but then they've added linebacking depth with Blake Cashman out of the University of Minnesota. Hopefully can be uh, another James Laurinaitis for Greg Williams. Laurinaitis was with the Rams from 2009 up until 2016. So, yeah, just scrolling through the through the picks. Uh, any other quarterbacks that have been selected other than the aforementioned guys that, that we've talked about? And the answer is no. So we have guys like Gardner Minshew the second still on the board. Nick Fitzgerald still on the board. Mississippi State, possibly the Minnesota Vikings may need to select a guy um, here in round six. And that guy may be Nick Fitzgerald or Minshew. Brett Rippon still on the board. I think arm strength limitations, size, are sort of hampering Brett Rippon as he hasn't heard his name called as of yet. Maybe he goes to the Cardinals right here at pick number 174 here in round six. But then we have Jared Stidham going to the Patriots. Round four, I believe. Or no, round five. So Stidham selected by the Pats round five. Uh, not terribly high on Stidham coming out. 
obviously, I, you know, I watched his film, and there were some things that he did well. Okay, he was able to throw with pretty good uh, pace, mechanically fairly refined, but some of the release point issues, he uh, you know has a low release point. It's not a consistent release point. His release is pretty quick, right? Even for him being six foot two and a half, six foot two and three eighths, uh, thick lower half for Stidham, but just some processing and accuracy issues that I think are affected by his mechanics not being, you know, where they need to be. Okay, part of that may be the fact that Stidham played in a circus system for Gus Malzahn down in Auburn. Okay, a lot of his reads were very non-conventional gimmicky uh, type play action and footwork. So that may be the reason why. But even at his pro day, he looked okay. But I think there were other options for the Patriots guys, such as Brett Rippon, you know, guys such as maybe the Pats should have grabbed Will Greer, you know, in round three, you know, ultimately. But now they have Stidham there, um, and the Patriots have had a pretty good draft. So what the Pats have done is they've tried to counteract some of the moves made by other AFC East foes defensively, the Patriots have tried to stock up um, on on their offensive line. They've selected at least two picks in terms of being guys who could start from day one on the offensive line. So, um, And then they also took a running back as well. But they've had a very good draft holistically. But the Stidham pick, I mean, you're bringing him in to, to compete with Brian Hoyer. He's not better than Brian Hoyer. And is he going to be able to compete with, um, you know, the LSU quarterback who they who they signed as a, or actually who they drafted last year, I believe, in the sixth round, um, to compete with him, I guess. So, um, yeah. So obviously the Pats felt that they had, that they saw value in Jared Sidham there. So um, other than that, yeah. So we're officially in round six. The Cardinals are on the clock. Um, so. I mean, how many quarterbacks will be going in round six? We have, uh, you know, the Tampa Bay Bucks. They have a pick late round six at two hundred eight. Maybe Tyree Jackson goes to them there. I would, you know, I would, I would think the Buccaneers need to upgrade their quarterback position, the backup position, at some point. They have yet to select one. Ryan Fitzpatrick is gone, so they're going to need to take a guy. It's you know more than likely Tyree Jackson at two hundred eight. Unless the Minnesota Vikings take Tyree Jackson at 193, which I believe they definitely could as well. Because, I mean, Jackson's a guy who's going in round six. 